for November, we're going to be looking at uh, cityscapes with figures in them. And I've chosen to use this image here for my painting. And what I want us to focus on is working in a more freehand approach. I do want you to do a preliminary drawing, but I don't want you to spend a long time on it, just 10 to 15 minutes just to find the bare bones of the structures of, of your composition. You will be drawing figures and I'd like you to think about drawing them very simply as almost like, like shapes. So for instance, think about the head as a square, the body as a rectangle, the legs as longer rectangles, the arms as rectangles. That way you're not going to get over complicated with, with details. So the other thing I would like you to do with your photograph is to trace. Now I've used this paper here, but it, it's not ordinary tracing paper. This is a type of um, polyester film that you can paint onto. And the reason I've used this is because I wanted to actually look at the, the how I was going to lay out the colours. So I placed it over the top of my photograph and I literally drew with my paint pens, my um, acrylic pens, just working out where the block main areas of colour were going to be and what the palette was going to be as well. So you might want to limit your palette so that you only have three or four colours or two or three or you might even want to just use black and white. So the point of this is to think about where is my main focal point, where, where am I going to look at first and to think about if you maybe want to crop your photograph and, and make it slightly less complex. So I would stick with very simple one point perspective so that you have got one point and all your sort of lines radiating out from that. And I would pick out the main figures in your photograph and just include those. I mean, the rest of the figures can be just painted in really, really simply um, later. So what I would like you to do first is to paint your background of your canvas. And I've chosen this sort of purple tone colour. We are looking at an artist who, called Kirshner who used exceptionally sort of bright, vivid colours in his paintings of people and figures. And again, he, he drew them in an almost simplified form. So we're not going to overcomplicate this at all. We're going to really sort of think very simply in terms of tone, colour, our composition. And we're going to use our marks in a way which I've looked at another artist called, um, I'll show you his work. He is called Hashim Akib. Now he does paint sort of all sorts of scenes. He has produced this book, Painting Urban and Cityscapes, and it's it's really clearly explaining how he goes through the process of painting figures in built up areas. He talks about simplifying the figure and how you can just sort of very, very use very simple, clear outlines. And then when you start to paint your figure, you can, again, very blocky brush marks, very sort of just two or three tones, very simple. Um, as, as I said, I'll show you a few of his paintings. He does focus on using directional marks. So he's thinking about using vertical, horizontal, maybe slightly diagonal marks. He also sort of overlaps all his his mark making. What he does say is that he uses a large brush. Now I'm hoping you will work on a large canvas, either A3 or A2. I've used one which is an A4 for the video. So the size of my brushes are going to be a lot smaller than the sizes that you could use for your larger scale canvas. Now, as I said, the background is painted in this sort of purple color and I'm gonna to stick to 
a contrasting warm and cool palette. So I've got for my warm palette, I've got a orange, I've got a pink, a yellow, and for my cool, I've got a turquoise, ultramarine blue, and a very pale blue as well, and that one is cerulean blue. And I'm going to also use my white, gray, and black, okay? So I'm limiting the colors. After looking at this, I sort of worked out what palette I'd be using. So if we think back to how, how we want to um, structure our painting, what I want you to do is think about the lines that are vertical, the lines that are horizontal. And I want you to put those in and draw out your composition using just one colour. Now, I suggest if you've got a purple background, it's up to you what colour background you use, but you think about putting in your drawing with a, a contrasting colour. So I'm using quite a bright cerulean blue and that will help me just plot out where these diagonal and horizontal lines are going to go. Now I've pre-done quite a lot on this canvas, mainly because of the time it takes in the video. But just select the main key lines and areas that you want to put in, the main buildings. So you are using perspective. Some of you might want to really sort of think about um, not using a ruler, but just remembering that you keep your distances parallel when you're drawing lines in perspective. So just suggest these key elements and key lines using your contrasting tone colour. And again, you can use quite a, a flat square brush maybe, or a round one, it's up to you. But think about working quickly. Don't overthink it. In this image here, I've got a lot of lines, okay? So I am going to simplify it slightly and put less in. But I do want to overall sort of suggest that there are windows in my scene. I also, with the figures, I've drawn them in in very sort of simple shapes, square heads, rectangles, and long rectangles for the legs. So the main key thing is to think about minimising the detail. So you might be quite overwhelmed when you look at your image and think there's an awful lot in there to put in. So uh, once you've drawn it out, start with your darkest dark. So look at where your darkest areas are. So I'm going to use a mixture of my black and my ultramarine blue to put in my darkest areas. So when I do that, what I'm really going to ask you to do is to just place your colour down and leave it. Okay, so you select your brush carefully, thinking about what size you want to use. And again, Try not to overcomplicate. Remember things, small little details like the windows will gradually get smaller the further away they are. So you can still use a relatively large brush. You're just using the tip of it. And as I said, I'm not aiming for like precise exactitude in this. I'm just looking to suggest where these windows are and these dark areas are. Using my brush and paint quite thick. So a key element of this sort of type of painting is I want you to put down the paint and leave it. And also I want you to think about drawing, almost drawing out with your brush. So that's why the shape of your brush is important. So we often feel we need to go back and return to brush strokes. Let's see if we can just do one and then leave it. 
rather than overwork. So once I've plotted in where my darkest darks are, I'm going to start to look at my very light tones. So for that, I'm going to use white mixed with a tiny bit of lemon yellow. And again, I'm using a large brush and I will be making sure that I don't overwork it. So mixing up my lemon yellow, I want to really emphasize these light areas and I'm going to see if I can put the paint down as thick as I can to start off with so that we can actually see a form of texture in the paint. There are lots of things you can add to the paint, paint mediums, but for this, this one I'm just literally just piling the paint on thickly rather than adding anything to it. So where the sun is hitting the glass, I've got very strong light and I'm going to really sort of push that in this painting to show where those light areas are reflected on the glass. So again, with the quick dry nature of the paint, you can come back to these areas later. So think really carefully. Where, where do you want your, your viewer to look? So for me, it's going to be this area here. And then think about the palette. What palette are you using in terms of tones of colour? So I've got a very light blue area here. And I've got clouds further down. So I'm going to work quickly in with my brush, applying the white where I see the, the lightest areas and just suggesting the clouds. No detail, just, just quick mark making. So this is almost like an exercise in mark making this painting, in, in to, to paint a little bit more boldly. So on the crossing, I've got very, very light stripes of lemon yellow. So quite a warm yellow, actually. So I'm just going to warm it up a bit with some orange. And I'm going to change the direction of my brush strokes and the angle of them as well. So your thought process is going to be working quickly. If you're painting quickly, you need to make decisions quickly. So Again, think about what are you trying to show in this particular brush mark? What area needs to be really, really light? Let's look at the figures and how you can approach those. And I would like a sense of movement because these are moving figures. So where you've got the figures walking, I'm going to drag my brush and just sort of give them a little bit of movement with my brush marks and think about if they're obviously they're wearing clothes where the shadows are as well but blocking in just basic shapes first and then I will come in with detail or more detail if I need it later So areas where I can see just, just sort of glimpses of colour from their clothes, I'm just going to put almost like dashes down. And things such as shoes are just going to be suggested with a line for, for sort of a suggestion of the direction of the shoes and where, where their foot is placed. But by dragging your brush and giving that sense of movement and blurred feeling, you're going to start to get a feeling of movement in your figures.
The other thing that I want you to think about is the type of surface you're painting. So if you're painting glass, you're going to have reflections. So again, you're going to need to really think about how you apply the paint. So I would probably have a more smooth, flatter application where I have glass. And also, don't be scared to overpaint as well, because when you're applying the paint, it will dry relatively quickly. And I want you to keep moving over the whole of the canvas rather than just sticking to one area so that you're thinking all the time about your composition and your placement of, of your marks. So this area here, I'm just gonna move the canvas, is a lot. So here, where I've got a lot of different colors, I'm gonna use a very, quite a fine brush, but I'm just gonna use lots of different marks to show that we have got sort of this, this sort of like very busy skyline. So there's, there's lots of lines, lots of windows, and it's almost too complex. So I'm gonna really just suggest these lines and just push them in. And I'm going to also ask you to think about squinting your eyes when you're painting so that you see where your darker areas are and where your lighter areas are. So I'm going to go back to the floor area now. And in between where I've got these yellow stripes, I've got white stripes. So they're not pure white, so I'm going to add a little bit of grey. And just suggest again using directional marks the way in which these these lines are, are sitting so shadows as well are going to give you a lot of information but again you can have quite long brush strokes quite long brush marks and that's what I'd also like you to attempt is to sort of see if you can lengthen your brush marks so they cover a larger area again so you're quicker you're working quickly you could try using a palette knife that would also change your marks and the way that you work or if you've got an old credit card or something like that so as i sort of continue to work i'm seeing if i can be a little bit more fluid with my with my mark making and with your canvas you're going to be working on a much bigger size than this Therefore, you're more likely to have a more fluid brush mark because you're using more of your arm and your hands. So when we look at other artists' work, such as Kirshner, we can see that he, his application of paint is very bold. But at the same point, he's really considered placement of colours next to each other. So those are the key things I want you to be thinking about when you're painting. I also want you to really think about um, how you're going to relate the figures to the environment. So having a figure next to, say, for instance, a straight building, that, that's going to give you a negative space in between. So I want you to look at those negative spaces in between your figures as well. Most of all, I just want you to have a go at thickening your paint application and freeing up as well. Okay, thank you for watching.